This is An American Workplace, a podcast dedicated to rewatching and discussing NBC's beloved mockumentary series, The Office. My name is Chad Hopkins, and joining me, as always, is my good friend and co-host, Katie White. Katie, how are you doing tonight? I had a sunny and 75-degree day in New York. Not that warm, I can say that. <laughs> it is currently 33 degrees and rainy and dreary outside in Dallas, and it's been like that for a couple of days, and I think it's still going to be like that for a couple more days. So uh, you've got the upper hand this time, New York. Ah, <laughs> uh, for once, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're actually recording uh, fairly late in the week uh, just because of scheduling this and that and traveling and all that sort of stuff. But we do have a couple of new reviews that we wanted to shout out. Uh, One from Indra Sarabia, excuse me, one from Indra Sarabia and the other from Sparkling Eyes 04. So thank you both for reaching out and telling us that you're enjoying the show on iTunes. I think that's all the housekeeping. Um, Let's move into our third episode of season four, Launch Party. It aired on October 11th of 2007, was directed by Ken Whittingham and written by Jennifer Salata, I think is the pronunciation we agreed on. I think so, yeah. (laughs) The Dunder Mifflin Infinity website launches today, Ryan's brainchild, and all of the branches are holding a satellite party to celebrate. It is believed that the website will be the best salesman of the company, which is the position currently held by Dwight. Dwight, in an effort to show off to Angela, who they recently broke up, challenges the computer to make more sales than him today. Dwight won, but Angela is not impressed. Michael believes he's invited to the VIP launch party being held in New York, so he drives half the way there, only for Jim to realize it's an invitation to the satellite party. He was not invited to the VIP party. Finally, further pushing Dwight over the edge, Andy has taken an interest in Angela and acts on it in this episode. Yeah, there's a lot that happens in this episode. Um, Just starting off with Michael being excited for this party that he thinks he's invited to, but he's really not. uh, Because he thinks that, well, one, he's a branch manager. So I would almost assume there's not like 50 branches of Dunder Mifflin. There's four or five. So I would think honestly that the VA, that the, the branch managers would be invited to this thing, but alas, he is not. Um, and also he, he thinks that he's Ryan's best friend. Right. And so he thinks that would be a, a reason to be invited as well. If it wasn't for him just being a branch manager. So doubly disappointed, but for the majority of the episode, he does think that he's going, uh, we learn that Jan doesn't want to go and in, in his, naivete he sort of he says but all your friends are going to be there and she rightfully points out michael i was terminated i was fired those aren't my friends uh so we we hear how she is continuing to be the self-centered one in this relationship uh she asks is this really that important to you you think okay she's she's gonna give in she's gonna uh seed because it's the nice thing to do when the other person in the relationship is excited for something right And then he says, yes, it is. She says, go by yourself. So (laughs) it it does not go well for Michael. Even when he thinks he's going, he's not getting his way. I have a feeling that even if the branch managers were invited to the VIP party, that Ryan would specifically not invite just Michael. (laughs) He wouldn't invite everyone else but Michael. He is not a Michael fan. He never has been. But he gets to show that now that he's in charge. He does. Um, he, he mentions that he doesn't want to go alone to this party, uh, because he doesn't, he doesn't want to be thought of as a loser. And I don't know if it would make him a loser to go without his girlfriend or to just go by himself. Like, do you understand what I mean between those two? I think so. Like, (laughs) like one, one is him just going alone, period. And the other is alone without his girlfriend because he has a girlfriend and she didn't even want to go with him does that make sense so i don't know what he's more scared of uh what 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 the perception would be but either way he doesn't want to be alone and as we've talked about that's just a driving factor for a lot of what michael does most of the time yeah and he's not realizing that it would be infinitely more awkward if he showed up with jan no one wants jan there except michael jan doesn't want to be there they don't want jan there it would just be an incredibly awkward situation for everybody, but 
Michael just wants the support and wants, you know, to have his girlfriend there. So not the best idea. I'm glad she doesn't go. That would be a whole other episode. Although they never make it there. So it's a moot point. He he does ask her for permission to ask Carol, <laughs> which right. is funny because, I mean, we know that Carol wouldn't say yes anyways, uh, just because of how they left things with him photoshopping himself into an old family photo on top of her ex-husband. Uh, but still, the fact that he even considers asking and mentions this to Jan on the phone, she's like, what, what are you talking about, Michael? He says, sorry, sorry. It's just the first woman that came up in my mind. <laughs> um, but when he gets J- uh, Jim to go with him to this party that they think they're going to in New York, he buys Ryan a copy of <laughs> Green Eggs and Ham because they were out of Oh, the Places You'll Go, which is a, a very standard gift for graduates most of the time uh, right. all the places you'll go you know you, you're moving on to the next part of your life and it, in a way it is sort of applicable he thought very highly of ryan saw him as sort of a a protege or pupil of his and now ryan's gone out into the world and so it was it would have been an appropriate gift but <laughs> michael says it was they were out of it and so he bought green eggs and ham and Jim rightfully points out, yeah, not not the same thing, but good book, though. Right. (laughs) (laughs) What's funny slash sad to me about this is, well, well, first off, it it shows that despite their recent conflicts that we saw in the previous episode, Dunder Mifflin and Infinity, Michael still appreciates Ryan. But then it also reinforces that his childhood wasn't that great to me because... Who doesn't know Green Eggs and Ham? Michael's flipping through the pages saying, have you ever read this? I don't really know what it's about. I think it's probably the same thing because it's by the same guy as Oh, the Places You'll Go. So, yeah, I, I remember, like, actually remember legitimate memories reading Green Eggs and Ham out loud when I was in kindergarten to my teacher. And Michael just doesn't have that experience. And we've known about his rough family life as a child. And so that that just sort of reinforces that to me that, man, he didn't have the childhood that was afforded to so many other people like you and me, I assume. Yeah, we don't, I don't think about Michael's childhood a whole lot. And I didn't honestly think about it here, but you're right. I mean, and not every kid that is raised well has been introduced to Dr. Seuss, but it's a pretty standard household name and household book Mm -hmm. and uh yeah i wonder if that is related uh when he learns that it's actually an evite and not an actual party that he was invited to attend we see michael starting to get the angriest he's been at this point in the show uh he he has jim pull over and yells at ryan on the phone he says, if you tell me that I'm going to have to drive all the way back to Scranton, then I'm going to throw up. I'm throwing up. And uh, he, he compares it to the freshman. This is, I assume, a true story from his life. A freshman throwing a party and not inviting the seniors. And I just have to shake my head because, again, it's Michael being naive. He was probably the only senior not invited because, of course, freshmen want seniors to go to their party. It's it's all about status, but them not wanting Michael says something about who Michael was. And again, it's sad. He spends this whole episode, I think, since that moment, being consistently mad at Ryan, um, mm-hmm. which is something we haven't seen a whole lot of Michael. We've seen him, you know, mad in moments and upset in moments, but I don't think we've had a real episode where he's been just consistently angry and we see that um into the end of the episode where he gets some pizzas delivered and the delivery guy won't honor michael's coupon and so michael holds this teenager hostage i mean (laughs) essentially (laughs) in the conference room and yeah it's it's at the kid it's at the teenager but really it's about ryan he's saying you know you you're a horrible salesman you, you don't know anything about sales um it just all the stuff that is clearly meant for ryan he's just taking it out on this kid because he's there um i don't even think that michael knows exactly what he's doing but it's clearly meant for ryan 
it turns into a sort of vendetta. Uh, first, he he tells Angela, we've got to throw out this party that you've been working on for the past two or three weeks, and we've got to make it better and sexier and just overall more appealing than what Ryan is throwing in New York, which isn't going to happen because Ryan's throwing an actual party in an actual club with hors d'oeuvres and sushi and all that kind of stuff. And here, Michael and company are in a paper corporate office, or not a corporate office, just a paper office in Scranton, Pennsylvania. So there's really not going to be any sort of comparison. And then he does order the pizza from the wrong pizza place, apparently, and uh, kidnaps the kid, essentially. And he, he yells, good business is about respect and accountability and follow through. And like you said, it's, it's just very transparently about Ryan and how he is feeling mistreated as a former boss and as what he perceived to be a friend. And so I just sort of have to wonder, is Michael really done with Ryan at this point? Because we see him toss out the book that he bought for him. We see him taking out his frustration on the party and then on the pizza kid in place of Ryan. And then finally he gets his chance to call Ryan out, not, not to his face, but to him and say, Hey, Dwight beat your stupid computer, a hole. <laughs> and so he, he gets to directly confront him. And Ryan, of course, acts like it's no big deal. But at the end of the episode, when Michael, um, Oh, am I getting, I'm getting that backwards. Ryan calls Michael, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so. um, says, hey, thanks for the shout out. Um, it, it really did kind of get to Ryan. He did not appreciate that. Um, but I think Michael enjoyed getting a little jab at Ryan. And um, I'm not going to say he deserved a jab at Ryan, but Ryan is definitely taking this opportunity to be uh, less than kind to Michael. I think Ryan is all about image now. Uh, he's dressing in fancy suits. He grew the the weird sort of beard thing he has. Uh, <laughs> he is making himself appear cool in his talking heads. Uh, I, I think it is in this episode where he props himself up in somebody else's office and has his feet kicked up. He's doing his talking head about nothing, really, nothing useful. And somebody else walks in and says, what did I tell you about trying to do these things in my office? Get out. And so he, he's trying to make his life appear more luxurious than it is. And then when he has built this status for himself, climbing to this high position in the company at such a young age, he's a wonderkin, remember? <laughs> uh, <laughs> he doesn't appreciate when Michael starts to tear that down by pointing out things like hey your computer actually sucks because my salesperson beat it and you're an a-hole and so it, it, it's starting to sort of chip away at this exterior that ryan has sort of put on for himself and show that not everybody does like him which is so funny because michael was really the one person in the office that didn't understand that it was all just a facade change um he always knew that ryan was so cool and so sexy and just <laughs> you know this awesome guy and the rest of the office kind of it wasn't talked about but i feel like they knew that ryan was just you know kind of power hungry and okay now he's a corporate guy and now he's gonna get 200 hundred dollar haircuts or whatever it was and okay um but michael always knew that he was cool uh and here he's realizing that he doesn't respect Michael. Um, in fact, that's one of the things he yells at the kid. He says, you need to learn respect. You pulled the rug out. You pulled the rug out from under me and you need to learn respect. Um, mm -hmm. He's hurt. Yeah. Yeah. It's the angriest we've seen Michael in a long time, maybe ever save for last episode when he was desperate to get the turtles back. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the ending of the episode has him realizing, holy crap, I kidnapped a kid and I held him ransom. Right. And Dwight says, you had to. What other choice did you have? Michael says, well, I could have paid for the pizza. <laughs> Dwight says, well, like, yeah. yeah, fair point. <laughs> so he tells Dwight, pay the kid, give a generous tip, uh, but uh, no more than 10%. That's not generous. 
especially when no. you've held him captive for a few right. hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he and Dwight decide to go to New York again, or go to New York because he wants authentic New York style sushi, not a thing. <laughs> um, and they end with them sitting on the hood of Dwight's car, eating this leftover stolen sushi and mocking Ryan. And then they, they pile up and head back home. So it's kind of nice to see Michael and Dwight bonding here. Um, mm-hmm. I, f- I feel like Dwight sometimes gets taken advantage of by Michael. And especially when Ryan is um, in Michael's favor, Dwight gets kind of third wheeled and it's, it's nice to see that friendship again. Yeah. If you think back to the fire in season two, uh, that was when Michael was really starting to forge this bond with Ryan and Dwight was not happy about it at all. And he was so excited at the end of that episode because Ryan started the fire, which by the way, I've had that song stuck in my head a lot tonight (laughs) for no reason. Uh, but it'll get in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we, we've seen that rivalry and that sort of jealousy that Dwight has had for a long time since that episode, because Ryan was held in higher favor or in better regard than Dwight himself was. And so now the tables have turned and Michael is willingly and openly mocking Ryan and Dwight's all in on it. While we're talking about Dwight, let's, uh, let's dive further into him. Um, I have in my notes, well, Dwight has a beard, so clearly the breakup's not going well. <laughs> he's, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> he's a little disheveled looking. He's got some stubble. He's holding himself just, he's exhausted. He's heartbroken. Um, his breakup with Angela is not, not going so well. There's actually a deleted scene where he addresses it. He says, I stopped shaving because my girlfriend broke up with me. Am I in pain? Hell yeah. But I'll tell you something. I thrive in pain. I love pain. To me, (laughs) pain is not pain at all. No, it is pure pleasure. And I hate pleasure almost as much as I love pain. So, yeah, I'm in pain. (laughs) (laughs) Complete nonsense. (laughs) (laughs) But, but I don't know. This, this podcast has me viewing these episodes in different ways than I did a lot of time when I had it on in the background. And I've mentioned that before, but he, he's very tormented in this episode and it's tough to watch at times. Previously, I would just sort of laugh at the whole, uh, self-aware Dunder Mifflin computer system prank that Jim pulls on him. And I, I'd still laughed a couple times But there were a couple of times still this time around where it was tough to watch because it Dwight was already in a rough place and there were times when the computer was winning and he was not reacting well to the the challenges being thrown his way by Jim and Pam via the computer. And so I, I really felt bad for Dwight watching it tonight more than I ever have. Pam even says, like, this is, this is mean. He's, he's going through a breakup. And Jim's like, yeah, but he's, he's being insufferable. And Pam kind of, okay, yeah, you're right. He, is, he needs some, some work. But putting yourself in Dwight's shoes, I mean, he was with Angela for years. And... Now they still have to work together, and she seems to be doing just fine. Um, yeah, I mean, that's not a fun place to be, and now, on top of all that, this computer is beating him. I mean, until he, the end, of course, and it's just, oh, it's hard. He He's trying to do this as a way to prove himself to Angela, which I don't know exactly what outcome he was hoping for because she even tells him from the start that she doesn't care uh, the the results of this one way or the other she she thinks the computer will win but even if Dwight does win she says I, I don't really care it doesn't matter to me you're not important to me anymore because you killed my cat and so he still goes out on this journey I don't know if it's more of a, a self-affirmation sort of thing or what but 
he does win and he goes over to Angela and says, I did it for you. And she says, well, I didn't ask you to do it for me. So there. And then she further slaps him in the face by going up to Pam and saying, hey, I would like to be in a relationship with a man. Do you have any friends that you can set me up with? And that's sort of a twofold insult to me because one, it's her admitting out loud that she is moving on from Dwight. And two, the, the, the phrasing is a very Angela phrasing sort of thing, but I think it also sort of emasculates Dwight, you know, because she says, I would like mm. to be in a relationship with a man as if Dwight wasn't a man. And so she's wanting a mature relationship this time. That is very Angela. And I agree with you. Um, I don't think we had any doubt that Angela was interested in a man. Um, that wasn't mm-hmm. necessary to say she's interested in a man, you know, <laughs> somebody that's mm-hmm. not Dwight. She wants somebody else. And uh, yeah, I hadn't really thought about that way. I kind of did. I, I, I got it from the phrasing, but talking about it, I totally agree with you. Yeah, that was harsh. And to, to make things worse, Andy all of a sudden starts expressing interest in Angela. So it's like things are just stacking against Dwight. And I feel so much pity for him in this episode because by the end of it all, Andy seems to be winning her over uh, because he he goes with it, uh, goes with that that typical Andy fervor uh, that that goes all in, super extra. And she walks away smiling a little bit, somewhat pleased. uh, And he had brought... He had brought her the ice sculpture of the swans or whatever they are for the party that she had asked for. And so Andy is trying to pull out all the stops to try and win Angela over. And it's fresh after this breakup. And Angela's already expressed interest in finding somebody else or at least distancing herself more from Dwight. And I, I, I was really proud of Pam for her final message as part of the prank from the computer of Dunder Mifflin saying, uh, you beat me, and you are the superior beating, the, the superior being. And Dwight just sort of, he's still upset, but you can still see a little bit of a glimmer in his eye, like, well, at least I have this. And that's all he has. It kind of pains me to see that little smile on Angela's face after she walks away from Andy, because that's Dwight's smile. <laughs> We've seen that on her face from Dwight before, you know, if they're flirting in the office and hush hush no one's supposed to know and she'll kind of walk away and smile a little bit and that was always their thing and now it's not and it's just yeah it's a new time angela she she's so eager to move on from dwight because she is upset and she has a right to be upset as we've talked about in the previous couple of episodes but she is clearly unhappy or more unhappy than she normally is. As, as Pam points out in a talking head at the beginning, uh, Dwight and Angela are both prone to us un- unpleasantness and they are now being more unpleasant than normal. So, and, and she's not the only one to point out that Angela specifically is worse than normal. Phyllis says, yeah, she's being more difficult than normal. So I, I Googled how to deal with difficult people. We're going to try out some new things today. And Michael even uh, jibes at, at, Angela a couple or a few times he first calls her pipsqueak and then calls her booster seat and then makes fun of her not being tall enough to ride a roller coaster in order to talk her down whenever he's trying to restructure her party and so it, it's it's tough that Angela feels this way about Dwight because Dwight makes her happier I had that down some of those um nicknames for Angela I had them in my funny moments those just <laughs> got to me i don't know why they made me laugh so much <laughs> i feel like that was just some joke in the cast or something about angela that week angela uh-huh. uh kinsey the actor about how little she is and i feel like they were just joking around and uh like threw those in the script or something because that was pretty funny it is funny but then it's all it also contrasts with in women's appreciation back in season three uh, she was really proud of the fact that she was so petite and that she has to right. shop in the American doll uh, <laughs> uh, clothing store or whatever it is. And now it's turned into an insult 
and she can't really feel proud about her size if people are making fun of her for it. And it's just going to show that she's making everybody else not not miserable, I wouldn't say. Not not everybody's just miserable being around her, but they're certainly unhappy because she's unhappy and is treating them poorly. There is one little thing I wanted to say about Jim. Um, a few episodes back, I guess the beginning of season four, um, I was questioning why Jim... Like, what exactly happened? Did he withdraw from consideration did he you know talk to david wallace in the meeting was he offered the job how did that happen but jim answered my question here in this episode he withdrew Mm -hmm. from from consideration from the job officially um we were a little unsure as to how exactly that went down um and we don't have specifics but he did withdraw from consideration um so it is understood that he was offered the job. Yeah. Michael, of course, uh, says he withdrew as well, <laughs> which technically I guess he did, but it was after David already offered or already uh, didn't give him the job. So it doesn't really count. <laughs> right. Um, th- there were a couple other just smaller gym moments that I wanted to point out. Uh, this is sort of a funny moment, but when the whole kidnapping situation is going down, and Jim approaches him and says, yeah, you definitely kidnapped a kid. And Michael calls a pizza place and gives him a list of demands and uh, asks for a ransom. <laughs> uh, Michael says, I think you're overthinking it. Jim just says, I think you're underthinking it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then after that, to sort of escape the situation, Jim goes to Pam and says, do you think you can get up to the roof with a couple sodas and uh, I'll meet you up there with some pizza. And so they sort of recreate their date, quote unquote date from the client back in season two, where they ate together on the roof uh, and they're reminiscing and talking about the moments when they first knew that they liked each other. Um, so it, it gives us a little bit of a timeline clarification because we had talked about who worked there first, when it was, how long ago it was. Um, it it is confirmed 100%. I don't remember what we said before, but Pam worked there first, walked Jim to his desk on that first day and said, uh, you need to remember what your life is like now because after this, you can never going, you can never go back to this time before you met your desk mate, Dwight. <laughs> so that was a moment that Jim mm-hmm. picked. And then uh, she picked the moment when he came over and said, you know, this might sound weird, there's no reason for me to know this, but that mixed berry yogurt you're about to eat has expired. <laughs> and that's the moment she, she said she knew that she liked. And they're both sort of amazed. And uh, it, it's that same sort of sentiment, you know, why didn't we get together then? Because that was a long time ago. And we're just left thinking as audience members, yeah, why didn't you? But yeah. <laughs> we have a couple seasons going over that already. Um, and then just one thing I wanted to say about Ryan, um, just more of a, more into his personality now that he's a big boss man, but he has this talking head in this gorgeous office with a view and he just starts, uh, kind of BSing about how he just started a website and, uh, but you know what, it, it shouldn't be a big deal. It shouldn't be a beauty contest. He's just being, you know, pretty cocky as usual. And the door opens and we hear a voice off camera say, I told you not to do that stuff in here. You can use your office or you can do it in the hall. Um, he's using somebody else's office. So even for the cameras, he's putting on this scene, this facade. Um, that's not his office. Presumably his office does not look that great. Uh, he's in a lower level and he's just trying to boost himself up and look really great. Um, even for the cameras, not just for his subordinates so he's trying to fool everyone yeah the only thing i wrote in my notes for ryan was yep still an arrogant jerk bag (laughs) (laughs) yeah Um, that's about right now now these aren't talking points i really want to linger on but uh kelly uh appears to start have a little bit of an interest in daryl he comes up uh, she orders a ream a single ream of paper from the website much to dwight's chagrin and Dwight goes to confront her because, and, and Daryl, who has come up to hand deliver this ream of paper to her, uh, stands up for her and says, hey, you need to get out of her face. And uh, then he 
sort of indicates that he's interested, says, hey, you, you still missing Ryan? She says, not so much anymore. He just goes, hmm. <laughs> and so <laughs> there's a little bit of a hint that they might be getting together sometime in the future. Um, I already mentioned Phyllis Googling how to deal with difficult people. And she seems excited at the prospect of trying new things uh, to deal with Angela, almost uh, with the mindset, how could Google be wrong? You know, I mean, I got this off Google. It's the internet. It's the, it's the future. And we're going to tackle this Angela problem once and for all. And it just does not work for her. And man, nobody can tear down Phyllis like Angela does. And it's rough to watch. She is very, very good at tearing down Phyllis. <laughs> Which makes it all the more satisfying when Phyllis gives in to her anger and just throws those sticky notes that she's written the task down <laughs> on in Angela's face and says, yeah, that seemed to shut her up. <laughs> and Angela says, ow. <laughs> like, they're sticky notes. So it's fine. Uh, we actually talked about a lot of my funny moments, but I did have a couple more I wanted to uh, mention. This cold open is great. They actually use it <laughs> in the uh, menu for the DVD for this yeah. disc. Um, it is where they're all in the conference room. Michael's at the front talking. And behind him is the TV. And presumably there's a DVD uh, in the player. And it's gone on the screensaver, which is that square that just bounces around the screen. And... The entire office is really wanting it to bounce into the corner of the screen, but it always hits one edge, bounces off, and, and keeps going. Um, there's a bit where Jim says, you know, Pam swears she saw it once when she was alone in the conference room. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Pam says, no, I did see it. I saw it. Who said I didn't? Jim, did Jim say it? I saw it. And... Michael is up there just naming off these mindless ideas for the office and no one's paying attention. Um, and finally the square bounces into the corner perfectly. Everyone cheers and Michael assumes it's based on what he's talking about. And everyone just gets up and leaves. And Michael's like, yeah, let's quit while we're ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and it had nothing to do with him the whole time. It's like he's surprised for a moment at how excited they are for his presentation, which I don't, right. I don't like surface level. I couldn't even tell you what he's talking about because I was so focused on the the, the DVD box going into the corner too, but it, it's nothing exciting. And so he's just excited that they're excited and uh, is unaware that it's not actually for him. They even um, groan at one point when it looks like it's going to go into the corner and it doesn't. And the whole office groans. He goes, okay, okay, we don't have to do that one. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Andy goes, oh, come on. <laughs> right. Uh, speaking of Andy and his enthusiasm, a lot of this episode, he's helping out Dwight. He, he's sort of become Dwight's own number two in a lot of ways. And he is very enthusiastic in keeping tally of the, the sales that Dwight is making versus a computer. And Jim starts mocking him for it. And he says, hold on, were you mocking me? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I have a difficulty with letting things go. And he turns back to talk with Dwight and Jim just says, oh, by the way, yes, I was. Was what? Mocking. Yes. Yes. And uh, <laughs> Andy says, thank you for clarifying that. Turns back to Dwight and uh, Jim interjects something else. As, uh, you know, Andy's suggesting they they should have something to announce a new sale. And so they list a couple things and Jim says, or a gong. And Andy turns back to look at him and Jim just nods and said, yep, still mocking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little throwback to, I guess the last episode. Well, my brain's all scrambled. Uh, when Meredith got hit by the car, um, she walks up at the beginning of the episode and hikes her skirt up, and we see a big, huge, like, pelvic cast, and asks Jim to sign her cast. No one else has signed it, and Jim is super uncomfortable. He signs his name, and Meredith is like, yeah, I'm singling you out, and it's really creepy and weird. And she says, I'm gonna read this when I get home. It's just his signature. Mm. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> Meredith is just yeah, maybe a little crush on Jim. 
Yeah, I guess she hasn't been around the office, so she doesn't know that uh, that Jim and Pam are dating. They only announced that last episode, right? So yeah, uh, I, I guess she just hasn't figured that out yet. And something else that's funny, I'm pretty positive, and just Google searching uh, seems to confirm it. John Krasinski writes his own name instead of Jim Halpert on the cast. Oh, I had heard that too. I think that's right. It's just yeah. muscle memory, you know? Yeah. Uh, and just a brief Creed thing, because we like to mention him. As Jim uh, is signing her pelvic cast, we see Creed in the background just sort of staring like he's he's <laughs> pleased or turned on or something. It's real I think creepy. He's like nodding. But... or something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> oh, my apologies. Meredith got hit two episodes ago, because of course... That's the first thing in it's season four. So two episodes. Right. Um, Dwight decides to compete against the computer. And before they start, uh, it's down to the 30 second countdown. He says time to carbo up and he pulls out power gel, which I didn't even know was a thing, but it sounds disgusting. Um, and it's twice in three episodes where we have characters preparing for events that don't need that level of preparation. You know, we had Michael before the fun run scarfing down Alfredo and not drinking water. So completely doing the wrong thing for a 5k, not that, not that far of a distance. And now we have Dwight downing power gel, whatever nonsense that is. And all he's doing is making sales. He's doing what he's supposed to come in and do every single day of work. It shouldn't be any different. Dwight also mentions that he was the salesman of the month for 13 of the last 12 months. Uh, He got two plaques in lieu of a raise one month. Uh, So I don't know if he's fine with not getting a raise or not. It's not like he's grinning about this or anything. He's just sort of holding it up, announcing a fact. Uh, But he's at least proud of the plaques. So whether he's upset about not getting the raise or not, he's glad he got the two plaques. Andy, in his attempts to win over Angela what he does is sings um the ABBA song take a chance on me but it's not just him he schedules this like big conference call and puts everybody on speakerphone and it's quite well organized actually and it ends up being a a a trio or a a quartet um of different parts of this song and uh pretty well organized for people that presumably don't live in Scranton. So he had been planning this. Um, so pretty cool. I mean, pretty dorky, but pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. It, it's that Andy enthusiasm. Uh, I, I wrote that in my notes as him going super extra. <laughs> um, yeah, but it, it does seem to charm her. So good for him, I guess. We'll see what happens going forward. Um, there's this whole debacle with the pizza and i love everybody's enthusiasm for alfredo's pizza cafe versus <laughs> pizza by alfredo uh, uh michael says he he ordered pizza from alfredo's that's all he says and everybody's like hold on hold on which alfredo's was it alfredo's pizza cafe or pizza by alfredo and everybody is unanimous on their support for alfredo's pizza cafe in fact it's like so unanimous that kevin says oscar you explain it and so oscar is able to say there's there's this difference in quality of ingredients and in overall taste uh and it turns out michael picked the wrong one kevin has a talking head uh, about pizza by alfredo saying it's like eating a hot circle of garbage (laughs) (laughs) and and later uh Michael is, it's right when the, the kidnapping thing is about to start. So the delivery bo- uh, guy has come in and Michael's trying to get his discount. And Oscar shouts from the accounting corner of the office, it's not pizza. <laughs> like, yeah, you can call it pizza all you want, but it's not. <laughs> oh, we learned something interesting about Dwight as well. Um, <laughs> he has this little bit with the delivery boy. It turns out Dwight actually grows hemp on his land as well as beets. And the the delivery boy says, yeah, I know that guy. He's that farmer that grows really crappy weed. (laughs) And, um, but fun fact, hemp is actually illegal in Pennsylvania, I believe. 
And mm-hmm. uh, so Dwight kind of breaking the law there a little bit, but uh, this delivery guy is also a thief. So <laughs> lose, lose. Yeah, I, I really like that back to back, those back to back talking heads. I think it's really funny how they pair them. Uh, Dwight. Yeah, I know that kid. He's the one who's one of the ones who sneaks onto my uh, farm to steal my hemp. And oh, yeah, I know that guy. He's a crappy farmer who steals uh, who grows crappy weed. I, I just butchered that. But I, I just love how <laughs> that's the, the, the immediate back and forth of that is it's really, really funny. Um, Oscar. And everybody else researching the consequences of kidnapping after Michael has forced his kid into the conference room. So everybody else uh, starts Googling or wherever else they're going. And Oscar says, we're looking at jail times. Stanley, you go look up accomplices. Uh, we're, we're trying to figure this out, <laughs> which is really funny. And uh, on the roof during their date, Jim is able to reference that it's what a class two felony or something like that. Uh, yeah, because so. they did the research. So I, I think that's really funny that they, they grouped together to find out exactly how culpable they would be if the police <laughs> were to become involved. We did have deleted scenes as well. Um, there's a really good one where Michael brings Pam into his office and demands, begs her to tell him what's wrong with him. That's how he phrases it. Tell me what's wrong with me. She hesitates and he says, Come on, just do it. I know, I know you want to. And she just blurts out, sometimes your laziness borders on incompetence. And Oof. Michael says, no, 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 bags. I have bags under my eyes. <laughs> like he's, he didn't mean his personality. He meant right now, what's wrong with my looks? And he did not specify. And luckily for Pam, he didn't catch on to what she said, but ouch. <laughs> yeah, Michael you can't leave yourself that open for criticism because there's a lot of things people could say about you. <laughs> They're going to take it. <laughs> uh, Dwight and Jim have an exchange where they're talking about how unshaven he is. Dwight says, what, Jim? Well, it's just that you had no hair on Friday. Dwight, it's called being a man. You should try it sometime. How long have you been a man? I was born a man, <laughs> Halpert. That must have been extremely uncomfortable for your mom. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good exchange um, we have some scenes where Angela is tasking people with more chores for the party uh, Angela no Pam must blow up 50 balloons and find a famous person no big deal Meredith is supposed to find something cool that Ryan doesn't know about yet so that's further proof that Michael is just planning this party around Ryan and making it so much cooler than Ryan's party and just all about him. Kevin has a talking head where he says, in every good hostage movie, during the part where it gets really tense and you don't know whether the bad guys are going to let the hostages go free, the cops order pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so a glimpse into Kevin's mind in ordering the, uh, from Alfredo's Pizza Cafe there at the end during the hostage crisis. Toby is doing a defensive driving test or traffic school, I think Kelly calls it, at work. Uh, he had been pulled over for driving too slowly because that's the most Toby thing possible. And <laughs> Kelly calls him out and says, hey, um, you got mad at me the other day. You, you told me I couldn't do personal things at work and here you are doing defensive driving. And he's just like, yeah... <laughs> Uh, but he's going to keep doing it anyway. But of course he got pulled over for too slow driving. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and he, he mentions, I tried to get out of it with the famous Toby Flenderson, 10,000 watt smile. Right. Uh, he, he smiles and says, oh, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Sad Toby. Uh, now as for our discussion topic for this episode, I was wondering, okay, you are, Ordering your favorite pizza from Alfredo's Pizza Cafe, not Pizza by Alfredo. The good one. What right. toppings do you get? Uh, recently, I've been on like a big white pizza kick. I don't know if you've had it. It's it's not quite Alfredo sauce. I don't really know what it is. Sometimes it's just olive oil. Um, but mushrooms, onions, spinach, 
maybe some sausage. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. What about you? You just mentioned toppings that I wouldn't put on my pizza. (laughs) (laughs) We can't have pizza together. (laughs) (laughs) I'll I'll eat some sausage, but it has to be the right kind. Um, I'm I'm, I'm more like the, the, not like the crumbled sausage, but like the sliced sausage. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Okay. Right, we'll, yeah. We'll at okay. least have that in common. We have that in common. <laughs> <laughs> I like, uh, most of the time when I order pizza, I do pepperoni, Canadian bacon, um, beef or hamburger, whatever you want to call it, and black olives. That, that's like my go-to. Um, yeah, we're opposite. But I, I just like, I like pizza, so. <laughs> I, I, could do, I, I could do olives on mine. But I think it's pretty perfect as it is, so don't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, as long as you're not putting too many veggies, olives are the only veggie I'll really eat on my pizza. Though I don't think I would be completely opposed to mushrooms because I do like mushrooms. I just haven't had them on my pizza before. Oh, um, then you're missing out. Well, I- I'll give it a try sometime, Katie, <laughs> Katie and I will update you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay, you'll you'll like it. <laughs> Well, with that, I think that's the end of the official 31st episode of An American Workplace. Thank you all for listening. Contact for the show, facebook.com slash workplace pod and at workplace pod on Twitter. Please go over to iTunes or the Apple podcast app on your iOS device and consider rating, reviewing, or subscribing to us. Uh, Our download numbers are still looking good, but we can always use some more growth. Uh, And if you have feedback or ideas, you can email us workplacepod at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at ktlady623 or at facebook.com slash katie.white. And the best place for me is at chadadada on Twitter. That is C-H-A-D-A-D-A-D-A. Also facebook.com slash chad.hopkins. And then there's my other podcast, Cinescope, where we talk about the movies we love and why we love them. You can find that where podcasts can be found or at the website, thecinescopepodcast.com. Show notes and all other contact information for this show can be found at workplacepodcast.com. And that is all for this week. Thank you all for joining us to watch one of our favorite shows, The Office, here on episode 31 of An American Workplace. Make sure to join us in episode 32 for our discussion on the next episode of season four, Money. Goodbye.